How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored, appointed and anointed, ready for battle? Remember, we were born in war. Amen. Welcome to Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. It's a good night to die. <laughs> yes. Everyone say yes. You're saying yes to Jesus. You will. <laughs> Everyone say, I will. Praise God. Psalm 104. Psalm 104. That song's still with me. It's a new season. We're stepping in it big time. That means everything of old's got to go. See, you can't get new unless you're willing to get rid of old. Now, people may say it, but they don't do it. And then people will justify when they say, I try him. I try. See, there is no trying in the kingdom. You either do it or you don't. You're either in or out. You're not on the fence because the devil owns it. I hear a lot of people, well, I'm trying. You ain't trying, you wimp. You're either a doer or you're not. Time to man up and woman up and grow up. Amen. There's too many souls being taken, too many children being abused, and too many people getting fat in luxury and missing the point of what God has called us to do and the purpose of a life on earth. Psalm 104, let's speak it. Verse 1. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and O oh my Lord, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. You cover yourself with light and with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind, who makes his angels spirits and his what? Ministers are what? flame of fire. Do you know you're supposed to be a flame of fire? Well, you know what takes a flame, the fire, to burn bright? It's called oil. I mean, if you think about in the everything that's associated in, in a lantern and lamps and things to that degree, especially when they didn't have electricity, everything was associated with oil. Without oil, they didn't have light. That was their main focus, was getting oil. And, and so then, even, even th now think about this, because the oil that is lit there, then we have anointing oil. That is the same oil that burns light. One burns a heavenly presence, and another one burns a physical presence. Does everybody understand? In this, you and I must be a flame of fire. To become one as a flame of fire, we must have more oil. One we must desire. The word says those who thirst and hunger are what? Filled. See, so when you come to a place of compromise and you ain't thirsty and hungry no more, you don't get filled. I don't care how much singing you do. In fact, you're just mumbling then. And when you realize that you're becoming lukewarm, you've got to ask God to get you hot. Lord, stir me up. Stir me up, Lord. Stir me up. Make me a flame of fire. Make me a minister of fire. Does everybody understand that? This is where, listen, and when you're walking in this, we just did a song tonight, Living in the Fire, right? See, when there's fire, everything that's not of God burns. 
See, so if you're not in the flame of fire and you're grumbling and complaining and you're saying, I'm, all, I'm struggling, well, then you ain't hot enough. You need to turn up the gas. Put more oil on that burner. Put some wood on the fire. Amen? Because nothing evil can hang on God's fire. So when people tell me, well, this and that, whatever, man, go get filled with the oil and become a flame of fire. Then you don't have any problems. Hello? Is everybody okay? Now, a flame of fire, to become one, there's something that you and I must do. Not only be filled with the oil, but again, nothing comes new unless you get rid of old. That means you and I got to burn bridges. We got to burn what? Bridges. Not build them. Burn them. He's the builder. We're the burner. 1 Kings 19. First Kings 19. Everyone say, I'm the burner. He's the builder. First Kings 19. Oh, yes. Verse 15. Remember, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against demonic forces. You know, if you really realized what's going on and how... I, wanna, I don't know how the, the word to express that if people really knew how evil evil was... They couldn't handle it. Most people would black out or pass out if people really knew how evil evil was. The influence, the abuse, the destruction, the torment, the lack of care, compassion, such pure evil. Pure evil with no compassion. In fact, they thrive off of tormenting. They thrive off of bloodshed. They thrive off of death. They, they flock to it. Evil is so much more evil than you can imagine. And it is happening. I don't care what horror flick you've ever been to, or, you know, Chainsaw Massacre and all the other, what's it, Freddy the Idiot? You know, I don't know. These guys ain't nothing compared to the evil that is really happening now behind the scenes that people don't know. So we need to be a flame of fire. God is depending on me and you to rescue these people through intercession, through being available, and through arming others with a prayer booklet. We've got to arm. My wife and I just came back from uh, uh, the beach, and man, I armed as many people as possible, even the CVS workers. I didn't care who they were. And it's amazing and how many believers are out there wanting to help and don't know how. Well, here, get armed. We need to arm up. Again, for us, we need to continue to burn bridges from the past, especially idols. People have no idea that they have emotional idols. Even the simplest little emotional idol without it being burned can affect you. It can influence you to step off course. And Psalm, I mean in uh, verse 15, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. 
Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Neshma, as king over Israel in Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abba-Malayo. You shall anoint as prophet in your place. Now he's talking to Elijah. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed his hand or him. Sound familiar? Did you ever see anybody kiss somebody's hand? Pope on a rope? They sell soap pulp on a rope that they wore around their neck. I saw it on sale one day. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. They got pulp soap. Like he's going to clean you. That man needs to wake up before, or he's a cooker. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 18, uh, verse 19. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the 12. Now, you got to remember something again. You've heard this before. To have 12 yoke of oxen was meaning you were wealthy. Amen? Now, this was his income. This was his family business. His parents had raised him and taught him how to do these things. But yet, he still from a distance followed this prophet Elijah. And wanted to be just like him. It was something burning in his heart. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. In other words, he said, come, you're called. God has answered your desire. Anybody have a desired answer from God? You wouldn't be here if you didn't. Have you called out to God for help? You wouldn't be here if you didn't. <laughs> and he's not looking at what we've done. He's looking at who we are in him. Verse 20. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Well, that was offensive. Can you imagine telling God? Now, I want you to think about this. If God Almighty showed up and said, Follow me, would you tell him, Hold on a second. I need to park my car or something. Or let me put one more coin in the slot machine. I don't think anybody would hesitate if God Almighty showed up to them. But see, people don't realize that he has multiple times. Just because they didn't see him. But so many times God has used someone or something to say, come. We've said no. We've said no to him. So verse 21, and, and, and anyway, he said to him, go back again for what have I done to you? <laughs> what have I done to you? So Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He boiled their flesh. How did he boil his flesh? He had to take all of the plows and everything that held the oxen together Bust it all up and set him on fire. What was he doing? Burning a bridge. The bridge. The main bridge that supported him, supplied him of his life. His love. His hope. And his family. He burned the bridge. Using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his what? Servant. Burning the bridges of our past and demonic influence allows a place of position. See, one of the things we're always battling is position. Without position, you don't have victory. Without position, you don't have success. There's a place and position. The word says that you and I are blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. It's a position. But people don't realize who they are because their identities have been compromised. Until you burn every, all of these bridges, your identity will no, never really come true to you. There will always be a compromised identity until every bridge is burnt in your life. 
that you have an idol to. Amen? Every bridge must be burned. Well, what happens then? Well, then God restores things that are burnt. He takes things that have been dead and brings them to life. Some things he'll restore, some things he won't. Does everybody understand? But the thing is, is you're not concerned about being restored. You're concerned about burning the bridge. When you burn that bridge, it's overdone with no more history. You move forward. Then you allow God to do what he wants to do. Because most bridges we built ourselves. And anything we built needs to burn. Amen? Praise God. This allows us a place of position. It's a position of authority. It's a position of identity. It's a position of recognition. And you're not, it's not a recognition of man. It's a recognition of the demonic forces. Psalm 119. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, verse 104. Burning bridges. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Psalm 119, start at verse 104. Through your precepts, I what? Ooh, let's, let's go back a little bit. What does that say here? It says in verse 103, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Why? Because his words we should be eating, right? Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every evil, false way. Your word, everyone say your word, is a lamp to my feet. Now think about this. The word says that God is a consuming fire. Is this word's fire? Yes. That's what light is. You can't, light is fire. Does everybody get that? Light is what? Fire. So when you speak the word out, it's not light, it's fire. Even though in fire, is there not light? Yes. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my what? Path. When, how is that established? When it's spoken. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your judge, righteous judgments. I am afflicted every very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your what? Your word. In other words, get me back on fire. How you know that revive is to put you back on fire. I accept, I mean, accept, I pray, what? The free will offering of my mouth. Oh, Lord, teach me your judgments. Powerful. The free will offering of my mouth. How I many of you know God loves to hear you sing? Your neighbor might not. But God loves it. Amen. Praise God. The word is a lamp. It's oil for fire. It brings light. What we speak is what we eat. What we eat is what? What we become. In Matthew 25. That's why Jesus said, it's so powerful. He said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. For you to have eternal life, you must eat my flesh. That's his word. And drink his blood. That's the oil. Does everybody understand that? That's what represents the spirit. Because the oil is what lights up the word. Amen? That's how it becomes fire. Matthew 25 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Oh, glory. Let's speak it. 
Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five stupid, uh, foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no what? They took no what? They took no what? Now you got to remember, he said they're virgins. Why are they called virgins? Because they've been washed by the blood. Amen? They're new creations in Christ. They've been washed by the blood. They're considered a virgin. So these are Christians, but five are wise and five are dumb. There's a lot of dumb Christians out there, unfortunately. In fact, they're still promoting and voting for the things that God hates. Those are dumb Christians. And they've been dumbed down. Because why? Remember this. Why? No oil, no fire. No oil, no fire. No oil, no fire, more demonic. More, no oil, no fire, more evil influence. No oil, no fire, more deception. Amen. All right. Verse 5. Let's speak it. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then those Virgin, all virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. How many of y'all know when you trim the lamp, the light gets brighter? Amen. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. I want you to understand something. You cannot share your oil with nobody. Why? It's not allowed. It's illegal. <laughs> Everybody must pay the price to get their own oil. Verse 9. But the wise answered and saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy your, for yourselves. And while they went to buy, in other words, they went to go get oiled up. Now it's time. Let's get fired up. Yes, because we've been in a life of compromise. We've been deceived under deception, doing the wrong things, proclaiming to be Christians, but not walking in the fullness of what Christ has called us to be. Still touching unclean things. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came. Hello. It was too late. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. After that, afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. <laughs> but he answered and said, Assuredly, I say, I do not know you. I want you to understand, fire knows fire. Fire knows fire. I don't know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. They lacked oil to burn the fire, to become flames of fire. Listen, if you can't become a flame of fire, can you burn your past? No. In fact, they're still living in the past, even though they're, they're still allowing their past to dictate their decisions. See, when you burn everything from your past, you're no longer allowing your past to dictate your decision. Amen? You're allowing God to dictate your decision now. In Hebrews 4. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Is everybody there? The Word of God is what? Living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And it's a what? Discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Why? Because it is bright. It's fire. It's light. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and what? Open to the eyes because you can see him of him to whom he must give 
account. Wow. So we see here the word of God, known as the sword of God, is a flame of fire to see all things as they truly are. As they what? Truly are. See, when you're on fire, and that flame of fire and the anointing is there with you, you see things the way they are. There isn't no assumptions. You hate assuming. See, assumption is nothing but false hope. It isn't true. I got a lot of people, well, I, 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 I just assumed that. Well, you did wrong. Assuming stinks. It's not a part of the kingdom. We don't assume. We wait, we hear, we know, and we do. Amen? Hebrews 12. Anybody ever get in trouble because you assume? Don't raise your hands. Because if you don't, it means you lied. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrew 12, 25. Is everybody there? Hebrews 12, 25, let's speak it. See that you do not refuse him who what? Speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from what? Heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a what? Our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? We are bound to give thanks always for you, brethren, as it, it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who what? Trouble you. And give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. With what? Wait a minute. Verse 8. In what? Flaming fire. Taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because of our testimony among you was believed. Now listen, remember, before the Lord truly comes himself here, he's coming through the body first. So you're going to be in, see an excel, uh, an, uh, uh, tremendous acceleration in the area of God's presence through the body of Christ before he truly, literally comes in that arena. Therefore, we also pray all, always for you that our God would count you worthy of his, this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness 
and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Flaming fire taking vengeance. But he's going to use the what? Body of Christ. Does everybody understand that? And Matthew 10. Matthew 10, 32. So is the sword a flaming fire? Yes. Think about the sword when uh, the Lord threw everybody out of the garden. Amen? What was left behind? The sword to protect it. It was a flaming fire. Matthew 10, 32, let's speak it. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I've come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but what? A sword. In other words, I came to bring fire. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up the cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will what? Will what? Will find it. The sword of fire is to burn emotional bridges, corruptible associations, cursed items, traditions of carnality, and I'll repeat it, and execute righteous judgment on evil forces of influence. Again, the sword of the Spirit is called the sword of fire. Amen? It is to burn emotional bridges. Write it. Burn what? Emotional bridges. To burn emotional bridges, to burn corruptible associations. You want to burn those bridges. To burn bridges of accursed items. Got it? Good. Everybody's going to turn their notes into me, and I'm going to check everybody tonight. <laughs> What's the next one? <laughs> to burn the bridges of traditions of carnality. How many of you know you're called to teach? How can you teach if you don't have it? And to do what? Execute righteous judgment on evil forces of influence. This is what the sword of fire is used for. Revelation 3. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 14. Revelation 3, 14. Everybody there? And let's speak it. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are what? Lukewarm, 
and neither cold nor hot, I'm going to what? Vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy for me what? Gold refined in fire. Gold refined in fire. I want you to under grab hold of something. God's gold refined in fire is called revelation. It's called what? Revelation. He says, I count you to buy from me what? Gold refined in fire. That's revelation. Why? Because when revelation comes, it brings a revival. It brings a refreshing. It brings more fire. And what does it do? It causes us to keep the restraints on. Amen. I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in fire that you may be rich in white garments and that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eyes have that you may what? See. So doesn't light help you see? Amen. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, don't be offended when you're rebuked and chastened. <laughs> but be zealous and repent. Turn away. Burn those bridges. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. How many, do you want to dine with Jesus? Anybody want to dine with Jesus? Man, I know where a diner he hangs out at. It's brought by revelation. <laughs> Verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Whoa. Again, gold refined in fire is what? Revelation, which is a nugget of fire. Amen? Luke 3. Burning bridges. You know that song that we were singing, uh, was it New Wine? And what it was it talks about, it says, a new flame. I lay down my what, old flame that I may be a, a new flame, a new fire. Amen. We need to be new fires. We're stepping into a new season. The old flame ain't good enough. You need a new one. Glory. Luke 3, verse uh, 15. Luke 3, verse 15. Let's speak it. Now, as the people were ex in expectation and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not, John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? Fire. Fire. Let me tell you something. How many of y'all know you can be baptized more than once? With the fire of God. We should be getting baptized every time we come into the service. More oil. More oil brings more flame. James 3. James 3. Jesus is a baptizer of fire. So many people miss the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or if they've been baptized once in the Holy Spirit, they think they got it. Pride steps in right behind it, believe me. Oh, you got it now. You're a tongue speaker. Speaking in tongues don't get you in heaven. Because the gifts are without reproach. There's people out there that use the gifts of the Spirit and are heathens. Does everybody understand that? You never discern by the gift, you discern by the fruit. 
Oh, he prophesies like crazy. I know a lot of nuts out there that are prophesying like crazy. They're nutty and fruity. They're called granolas. And they're prophesying in people's lives and they're believing them. But yet their fruits stink. James 3, is everybody okay? <laughs> Glory. In verse 1, let's speak it. My brethren, let not many of you become what? Teachers. Well, you're all supposed to be teachers here. That's why God sent you here. So it's important that you learn quickly. Well, I can't do it. Yes, you can. You can do it all things through Christ who strengthens you. See, this is where you're going to have to burn yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just carry a shovel and get ready to bury yourself every time you say, no, I can't do it. My brother, not, not many who become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a what? Stricter judgment. So you better get your stuff together. <laughs> For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in what? Horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder whether the, wherever the what? Pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a force a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a what? The tongue is a fire. So it's either going to be the fire of God or the fire of hell. A world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among your, our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on by what? Set on fire by what? Hell. So your tongue is either a flame of fire of God or it's a flame of fire for hell. You're either kindling one thing or the other. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. No man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and curses. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt and water and fresh. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. For, for where every... For where, what, envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Praise God. The tongue of fire. Revelation 11. Revelation 11, verse 1. <clears throat> Burning bridges. Why? Because we are flames of fire. Holy Ghost arsonists. Let's speak it. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. And they will tread the holy city underfoot for, 20, for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, 
And they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloths. Now, that means three and a half years. Amen? This will be the beginning of tribulation. These witnesses will show up. They'll begin to prophesy for three and a half years. These are the two olive branches. My, you need olive to what? Support fire. Amen? And the two lampstands, which brings light, standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, what's going to come? Fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. I want you to understand that when you are living in the fire, walking in the fire, being filled with the oil, when you speak to these demonic forces, fire is coming out of your mouth. One day my wife and I were driving by this place. Every time we come home from church, there was this um, gay bar. I said, Lord, that just shouldn't stay in there anymore. I'm tired of driving by it and seeing all these people hanging out. They need to go somewhere else, get delivered, healed, or something. But that structure is a place, it's a sanctuary for them. So my wife and I started calling destructive fire down on that building. About the third time around, there was, it was nothing but ashes. Hello. That's why the word says, what's in the tongue? Life and what? Death. And it's either flame from God or flame from hell. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. So I want you to understand that when tribulation starts, these guys are going to start releasing this, and it's going to manifest physically. And these have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they will have power over the waters to turn them to blood and strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Now, these are fruits of two individuals. Does everybody get it? Now, who turned the waters to blood? Moses. Amen. And who called fire down from heaven? Oh. Wasn't he taken alive also? Amen. Elijah. So those are the two prophets that will appear. They'll be appear in Jerusalem. And verse 7. And when they finish their testimony, which will be for what? How many years? Three and a half years? Amen. The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them and overcome them and kill them. Why? Because God's going to allow it. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where our, also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, and tongues, and nations will see their dead body three and a half days, which is in parallel to their ministry of three and a half years, which would be mid-trib, and not allow their dead bodies to be put into the graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another. Because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because there's going to be a lot of media. <laughs> a real lot of media. These guys will be prophesying right over television, cell phones, everything will be globalized. Now, after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on all those who saw them. And they heard the Lord's voice, a loud voice, say what? Come up. Come up here. This is called rapture, removal. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their Enemy saw them. Let me tell you, that cloud that they ascended in is me and you. Those who are still alive on the earth. They will go up with them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell, 
And in the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming. Again, these two witnesses, the main focus of them will be there. That whatever they speak is going to burn. Amen? They will prophesy when they'll destroy their enemies until the end of their ministry. Everybody okay? Exodus 3. Exodus chapter 3. Oh, if people might know who they really are. Exodus 3. <clears throat> Starting at verse 1. Hallelujah. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jer Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Median. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a what? In a what? Flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see the great sight, why the bush does not burn. And when Moses saw that, and when the Lord saw that, he, that Moses turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said to him, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is what? Holy God, ground. Now, I want you to grab hold of this. The burning bush was there, right? God was automatically burning Moses' bridges. Automatically, before you can get with me, you've got to burn your bridges. This is where there's true relationship. People that are not willing to burn their bridges really can't get close to God. They have a distance, long-distance relationship. And they live in a place of assumption and survival. They easily are swayed. Why? Because that oil and that fire is not there, which just burns up all the influence of their enemy. Is everybody okay? I'm telling you, God wants to bring us to a no higher level and a place where he can truly express himself through me and you. Amen? Praise God. So then, you know, then of course, then, uh, then Moses said, I will now go and turn and so forth and and, and what, what happened after that? Then he said, look at me and take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. <laughs> in verse 7, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I now, I know their what? sorrows so i have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians to bring them up from the land to a good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey in the place of the canaanites and the hittites and the amorites and the pezzites which are whatever and the hivites and the Jezo jebusites i want you to know that these are all tribes of giants they're all tribes of what? Giants. They were Nephilim. So God was going to tell him Moses, okay, now listen. Take your shoes off, man, because I'm burning your bridges for you right now. Come on in. Because I'm going to send you to the place of the giants, and you're not going to be able to defeat them without fire. Why? Because you've got to remember the giants have taken over. They were taken over. Cannibalistic offsprings of the fallen angels. That's why there's giants. There's still giants around these days. 
and our DNN samples have come down. Remember, you and I do not fight flesh and blood, do we? We fight powers of darkness. But these are tribes of giants. These are the race of Satan's kingdom. They are offsprings of his seeds now. He wanted to start his own race. And you and I were rescued from that race. We were known as children of wrath. That's why you must be born again. You come out of that race. You and I were involved. You and I were children of Satan. We came into this world. We were born in sin. We were born in a war. And at a certain time, God pulled me and you and I out. And many times he tried to pull us out, but we rejected the call. Until we finally ate enough dirt, ran into enough walls, got run over enough. Amen. Finally got tired of being sick and tired. And said, man, there's got to be more to life than this. And there was. It's called life. Because <laughs> we weren't living a life of life. We were just living a life of death. And then he pulled us out and called us out and said, here, here's the truth. Okay, now, here's Jesus' Savior. Now let's get you on fire where he becomes the Lord. And he'll, you will serve the anointing. You'll stay thirsty and hungry. You won't want anything else as long as you stay in that position. If you compromise it, you'll be easily swayed. We must be consistent no matter what. We must be disciplined no matter what. It doesn't matter how you feel. People always want to express how they feel. Who cares? But you don't know how I feel. Thank God I don't want to know. As far as I'm concerned, you can burn it. Emotional garbage. People who are on fire for God aren't looking for a feeling. They got God's presence. What more do you want? <laughs> Hallelujah. The fire of God that Moses would burn. <laughs> God was going to burn his bridges, and he had many of them. You got to remember, Moses was a murderer. I mean, he was defending someone. I mean, I guess it was a, what we might, you and I might call a rightful kill. I would have called it a rightful kill. But again, he couldn't follow the Lord without the Lord burning the bridges. You and I can't follow the Lord without us burning our bridges. I didn't say britches, bridges. Amen? Hallelujah. Ephesians 5. Well, some of our bridges need to get burned, I can tell you that. <laughs> That's how people get off their blessed assurance. Ephesians 5. And verse 8. Let's speak it together. For you were once what? Do you get this? You were you and I were once darkness, man. We were servants of hell. We had a tongue of hell. We were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Now let me tell you this. Can you expose them if you're not on fire? No, because you're still in darkness. Light exposes darkness. Does everybody get it? I've met sweet people that are so deceived. It grieves my spirit. Sweet people. I mean, they're good, sweet people. They're proclaimed to be Christians. But they're outer quarters. 
They have no idea about God's oil and fire. They don't have that relationship. It's long distance. So when there's a long distance relationship, there's not that conviction. There's compromise. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you what? Light. In other words, he'll give you what? Fire. See, then, then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. It sounds like the, for the ten virgins, right? Fools or wise. Redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And it says, do not be drunk with wine. Amen. In which is dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit, meaning being filled with oil. Being filled with what? Oil. When the Bible says be filled with the Spirit, you are filled, getting filled with oil. Oh, hallelujah. Be filled with oil, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the what? Fear of the Lord, that reverence, honor, and respect to God Almighty is established by being filled with oil and on fire for God. Why? Because he is a consuming fire. Now there's a union, fire with fire. Proverbs 25. And then one more scripture. Hallelujah. Proverbs 25, verse 21. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. If your enemy is what? Hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For, you, for so you will heap what? Coals of fire on his head. And the Lord will reward you. Hmm. The Lord will do what? reward you. Why? For assisting your enemy. Now, that doesn't mean you hang out with them. Does everybody understand that? And you don't call them. You burn associated bridges of evil influence. It's when they call you and they are in need. Do you understand that? Then you offer them what it is. But of course, you pray for them. But then you got to be careful because the enemy will try to abuse you, misuse you. But if you're walking filled with the oil and you're on fire, you're going to know. I've had many people on the streets pull me over and ask me for money. Of course, I always tell them, oh, are you hungry? Yeah, oh, well, let's go get something to eat. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, then forget it. I've had people, all kinds of people say whatever. But we are, should be wiser than that. Amen. Psalm 149, we'll close here. Psalm 149. 
starting verse 1. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song in his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. The children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with a what? Dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To do what? Execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bring their king, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. And to execute on them the written in judgment. This honor have all his saints who are filled with oil and on fire. Praise the Lord. Again, it is a position of authority executing fire against evil forces of influence. Because you have been placed in a position being filled with the oil and on fire for God. Why? Because you burn bridges. You burn those bridges. That's all. Everything is about burning bridges. And the enemy would like to build a bridge. It's a false bridge. you got to burn every bridge. Unless the Lord builds a house, we labor what? In vain. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray that each and every one receive your word in humility and fear and trembling knowing that your word does not return void and that you have high expectations of each and every one of us. You have predestined us to be positioned as authority, servants of the anointing, and flames of fire for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand tonight. Amen. Amen.